Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing um, along the lines uh, where I ended up in my previous video. I'm talking all about the Arctic sea ice, and the key thing that I'll be getting to um, very shortly in this video series is how the component of um, ice being, the fraction of the ice being melted by the warm ocean waters underneath the sea ice is ever increasing and enormous and it acts, acts as a um, extremely serious tipping point that we're fastly approaching as the warm salty Atlantic water underneath the ice it used to be separated those two regions a lens of fresh water on the surface going down you know meet a couple hundred meters and then the warmer Atlantic water below well that Atlantic water is now shoaling and coming much, much shallower, and will keep the uh, parts of the Arctic Ocean and the Barents Sea um, ice-free all winter. Basically, it's already doing that in some regions, and it's advancing eastward, so it's starting to fill more and more of the Arctic Ocean basin. So um, I'll get to that very shortly. Um, you probably recognize um, Arctic sea ice graphs, if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs. Here's where we're at right now. Um, with the uh, as of September 2nd there's this is all that's left of the of the uh, Arctic ice that's hopefully this updates quickly so here's where we are that's all that we have left and uh, we've had some very high melt days in terms of extent approaching 200,000 square kilometers and the concentration here you can see, uh, you know, this is 100%, and at the North Pole, it's not quite 100% shown here. And we know from the Mosaic expedition a few weeks ago that they found, I'll show you some images of this region. And there's huge gaps, huge water gaps. It's certainly not 100% concentration. So the satellite sensors have to be taken with a, uh, a grain of salt. Um, I always try to give an update on, on the virus. We've had 26, over 26 million cases globally. Um, the, the numbers are enormous in the US, almost double all other countries, although Brazil's coming, to, coming up to you know, 4 million, so not double, but um, one and a half times. Um, India, very, very high too, Russia, and so on. So as we move into the fall, uh, the most important thing you can do is be aware of the ventilation of the indoor spaces that you go in and it's vital that you wear a mask indoor, in indoor spaces, vital. Um, that's the biggest protection that you have from, for avoiding it. Now, there's a website which I came across on climate tipping points. So climatetippingpoints.info and this is, I highly recommend this. Um, to learn the basics of the climate tipping points in the different regions and also to see a different perspective on what happens when we lose Arctic sea ice, for example. Do we reach a tipping point in the Arctic? So, so this is a, so Google this um, site and have a look, you know, have a browse through it. Um, and it talks about, you know, basically the ideas of tipping points has become much more mainstream recently as we get nearer and nearer they talk about the blue ocean event remember that i coined this term blue ocean event many years ago the methane bomb scenario um, global dimming uh, you know would that trigger sudden dangerous warming and so on okay so there's lots of really cool stuff in here okay um, and uh, in Specifically, one of the links is fact check, will an ice-free Arctic trigger a climate catastrophe? And, uh, you know, the claim a summer ice-free Arctic called by some the blue ocean event will happen within the next few years and will cause an abrupt worsening of climate change and possible run, runaway feedbacks. And they go on and say, uh, you know, it'll probably happen. Summer ice-free Arctic will happen within the next few decades, they say. Okay, so they're talking about the peer-reviewed paper that says 2035, I guess. The exact year will depend on unpredictable natural variability. Yes, of course. I think we're a lot closer than what they're saying. 
Uh, and they also say a summer ice free Arctic would worsen regional warming and impacts, but would not cause a big or sudden increase in global temperatures. And you know, I have to beg to differ on that. In fact, I'm, I'm, uh, if you look at the links on the commentators, I think I'm four, five, and six or something. And it goes through some of the basics of, uh, you know, the loss of extent in the Arctic over time and how it relates to the models, drops off a cliff, models way under predicted, but models are getting better now. Um, okay, and then they show, uh, you know, what we can expect. And I've actually talked about some of these papers. I've, I've, I recognize these figures talking about this is loss of sea ice in terms of CO2 emissions, in terms of surface temperature change, about two degrees C here, you know, in the year, you know, and this is, uh, you know, way too conservative. And then they talk about the feedbacks and this have this plot. And they, they say here, this is an image from the Extinction Rebellion heading for extinction talks, source unclear, probably from Paul Beck with his Blue Ocean event post. Okay, so I'm in here quite a bit with some of my ideas and so on and they talk about so they give their viewpoint so i'm not going to go through it, the whole thing right now but basically they talk about the jet streams being distorted and where the heat is going or you know runaway feedbacks etc and this is by um you know they talk about um some you know wadhams uh papers and and estimates and so on so you know this is by some people um i believe these guys are um, they're connected with the, um, their, so it talks about the funding they have for this site and the blog is curated by Dr. David Armstrong McKay, a postdoc at the Stockholm Resilience Center. Okay, so this is some of the uh, closer to mainstream views on tipping points in the Arctic and I highly recommend you go to this website and have a look. I might do a separate video on, on the whole website if they have some updates. Now, the Mosaic expedition that reached the North Pole, you probably heard, um, this was 19th of August, so a few weeks ago, uh, the German icebreaker Polar Stern reached the North Pole. And basically, it was soft and easy to go up to 88 degrees north, and then because the ice was thin and porous, even after passing 88 degrees north, they maintained a speed of five to seven knots right, knots right up to the North Pole. And I'll just show you some images here so you can see. So look at the ice. This is at the North Pole. So, you know, this is on the satellite image. Like I said, it's 100% uh, concentration. Well, this is certainly not 100% concentration. Some of these, uh, these, this is definitely open ocean here. This seems like a lighter blue. So these are probably melt ponds on the ice and they're being recorded by the satellite as, a, as all ice. Uh, but clearly the albedo, this is the wake of the ship as it's churned through the ice. It, it's very, very thin. There's almost nothing there. I mean, less than a foot of ice, uh, you know. Um, and uh, if we look through some of these other images, this is a plaque indicating, you know, zero degrees, 90 degrees north, the North Pole. Okay, and the date, uh, August 19th, 2020. Nine, they're at 90 degrees north, the polar stern, mosaic expedition you know there's some of the crew celebrating as they get to the north pole look at this okay so you know the, the these uh leads here open areas they might be artifacts of the boat being here pushing the ice flows apart, apart. if you look here you know it's hard to tell but you know it's the, the ice is more like this it, you don't you don't see so many of these open areas but there is, you know, 100% concentration. It's counted by the satellite. It's very thin. It's very fractured. It's very broken. Abund huge numbers of melt ponds on the ice. So the albedo is dropped. So it would be interesting rather than just, uh, you know, if a satellite could have the resolution to separate, okay, what's ice, what's uh, open water, what's melt ponds, and then take the area of just the white areas with the high albedo and see what those numbers are, how close those numbers, how, how much further those numbers are down than the concentration numbers, which are in the air, you know, the area numbers, the extent numbers, the thickness numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, Mosaica, there's a lot, this is their website. This looks really fake. Look at these square chunks of ice. It looks really, really fake. Is this real or is, oh, it's an animated overview. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
So there's lots of stuff on here, and there's lots of things you can see there. You know, on their science, they talk about the details of their data. You know, what data they're collecting, the focus areas, and you can get all the details about this uh, expedition there. Basically, the idea is to lock the boat in the ice and just go where the ice goes. And they did that. They were carried out the Fram Strait, so then they had to charge up back to the North Pole. Now, the sea ice concentration in the last 30 days, if you look at the North Pole, is showing it's close to 100 percent, you know, 80, 90, 100 percent. And yet we just saw from the Mosaic expedition that uh, there's all kinds of melt ponds on top of the ice and it's more fractured than it would be than would seem to, to come out of this um, image. This is so if you just Google Arctic uh, HICOM satellite image, you, you get this page and it's I highly recommend it. This is the sea ice thickness. So um, this is in meters. So this is showing still some thicker ice down in this region, but the other satellite image uh, that I showed you, uh, you know, in the previous video showed that there's almost no ice thicker, that it's mostly 30 to 40 centimeters. So, so uh, and if you go to uh, the speed and drift, you can see the speed and drift here, but this is misleading. This is, they haven't updated the data. So this is from, the um, melt season, uh, this is from the 20, 2019 melt season and the motion of the ice. It's too bad the, the date is not updated, okay? So it's all here on the HICOM site. And uh, now if we go to Worldview, okay, I want to focus, okay, so this is August 28, 2020 on Worldview. And what you see here is this is the north of Greenland. Okay, and you can see how, you know, the ice is just north of Greenland. This ice used to be solid uh, up until recently. We're in a new regime and it's just slushy and broken up and fractured and so on. So let, does this go right to the North Pole? Well, the, the Mosaic expedition seems to indicate it does. So let's uh, go a couple days earlier than this. Okay, so you can see, so this is cloud cover here. Um, and you can see the ice there. We'll go back a few days. Okay, so we can see the ice, but it's, you know that you have to you have to go through the days and look at the changes and uh, figure out what what's clouds. There's clouds up here. Um, Twenty eight. Okay, so this is all clouds up here, obscuring the ice, and you can see how fractured it is up to up to this this latitude. And then if we go further, it's all cloud covered. Cloud covered, cloud covered. Okay, so this is September 3rd, cloud covered, can't see too much. Okay, but uh, you know, you can, so this is the clearest day actually, actually here, this is the clearest. So you can see the ice going up north of Greenland, about halfway to the North Pole, all fractured. The polar stern shows that it's like that all the way up, or at least there's melt ponds. Okay, now, this is one of the key factors that I want to focus on now. Growing underwater heat blob speeds demise of Arctic sea ice. So I'll talk about the, um, the press release first, which is this article. So you can Google this title and, the, and uh, find it yourself. But in March, okay, so the German icebreaker, okay, so they talk about the, uh, some of the uh, researchers on the icebreaker, seeing the ice flows. So basically, this thing was locked into the ice, I believe, in around October, you know, as the melt, as the freezing, as winter started after the last year's ice melt. And then it drifted uh, in flows, but then the flows broke up and they, they had to scramble to get their instruments from plung, plunging off the ice flow. You know, they're going to plunge into the ocean. So it cracked up. So then they moved and they went to the North Pole. Now, summer sea ice covers half the area it did in the 1980s, but because it's thinner, its volume is down 75%, actually closer to 80. Now, they say the Arctic's warming three times faster, at least they're getting closer, you know, it's three to five times, depending on the latitude. Most scientists acknowledge the inevitability of ice-free summers, perhaps as soon as 2035, okay? So the Tipping Points websites, when it said in the next few decades, are talking about this paper. Um, 
But it's not the warm, just the warming atmosphere that's speeding up the ice loss. It's the strengthening currents and waves, and I'll talk about that. Heat from the ocean. Thanks for listening. I'll continue.